Now, there are two ways by which you can think of randomization. Now, one way is uh, just like there are two ways of which you can think of uh, any dynamic game. One is through the normal form, the other is through the extensive form. By in the normal form, we just list out the strategies and then think of the game as a static game in those strategies. And uh, in, in, the, in the extensive form, we actually observe what the, you know, the flow of the information that is, that is happening within the game. Now, randomization can also be thought of in these two different ways. The first way is that, well, you convert the game to a norm, equivalent normal form. And then now in that normal form, we have one way of randomizing already, which is that a player can pick a pure strategy from that normal form at random. This is what is called a mixed strategy because that is what we refer to as mixed strategy in our uh, in, in static games. Okay. So, first way of randomizing is choose a pure strategy at random. Now, pure strategies in a dynamic game are functions. So, you have a space of functions, set of functions and you choose one of them at random. The, the probability distribution or the probability with which you choose the every function is what uh, what your is now the strategic decision okay so choose a pure strategy at random okay so this is what is called a mixed strategy for a dynamic game can you tell me what would be the other way of randomizing? Yeah, so each player would choose a pure strategy at random. So what would be an, what would be another way by which a player could randomize? So another way of randomization is the following: that whenever he gets to an information set, the player is aware of the actions that are available at that information set. He can choose an action at random at each information set. So, at each information set, he chooses an action at random. So, he chooses a probability distribution on the set of actions available at that information set. Okay. So, choose an action at random at each information set. And this is what is referred to as a behavioral strategy. Okay. So, the first one chooses a function at random. Okay. If a strategy is a function, so it specifies an action at each information set. So, at every information, uh, so one of these functions is chosen at random. In the second case, we define, so, so in the first case, what we need to do is define one probability distribution, which is over the set of all functions, all over all, set of all strategies. In the second case, we need to define a probability distribution for each information set, but it is over the set of all actions at the available at that information set. As you can see, these are both valid ways of randomizing. A player may want to wait for an information set and and randomize uh, is, and randomly choose an action that is the behavioral strategy or he may say well here are my here is my set of strategies I am going to pick one of them at random. Okay. Now, the, the second one which is the behavioral strategy is something akin to a delayed commitment. Essentially, the player is waiting for the information to be available before he commits to a to a strategy because the information the 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 probability with which he is going to take an action depends on the information set he is at whereas the first one is akin to a prior commitment it's roughly akin to a prior commitment because he is picking a uh, a pure strategy at random without waiting for what without waiting for the intra gay information to actually get uh, realized is this clear now the question for you is, is there a difference between the two? Or is there, uh, are these equivalent, are these 
is one the subset of the other or one more uh, you know somehow richer than the other. You can see both are very reasonable ways of, of randomizing. So, if one is a subset of the other that is an important result which basically it, it would tell us that well you can focus on one of these one of these classes only. No, this is multi act in general. In fact, in a single act in a single act game this point actually becomes moot. The reason is because every along every path a player will play it uh, uh, exactly once let us say and each such way of playing along that path defines for him a pure strategy and that is equivalent to then picking the action in that information set. So, these actually become equivalent I will show this formally, but uh, let us, uh, but, but in fact the point is moot in, in the case of a single act game. The point becomes interesting in a multi act game because now a player has to play multiple times. So, should he should he commit to a pure a, a distribution on the set of pure strategies at the outset or should he do a delayed commitment and play actions at random at each information set. Yeah. It is a strategy. So, it is a function that tells you what to do at each information set. That strategy is chosen, a strategy is chosen at random. It says that you know play this action at this information set, that action at this etcetera. So, so based on the information sets, a, a definite uh, set of uh, definite set of actions are specified. So, for each information set an action is specified, but the strategy as a whole is chosen at random amongst all strategies. So, related to this question, so you can see both of these are basically producing actions at random, right, but the mechanism for producing the actions is different. In one case, you are defining a set of strategies which is functions from information sets to actions which is telling you for what action you will be each strategy tells you what action you will be taking at each information set and you pick one such combination at random right that is the that is a mixed strategy. In case so effectively what you are doing is picking actions at random but through these combinations you are picking a particular pure strategy you are picking amongst the set of pure strategies. Whereas, in the second case you are being more explicit you are choosing actions at random at each information set right. So, somehow the equivalence of these two has something to do with whether these two uh, in fact lead to similar or uh, classes of distributions on your actions. Because if they did then you know one way of randomizing would be equivalent to another way of randomizing right. So, let me show you an example it is actually true that these are not equivalent in general ok and here is a simple example to show this. So, let us start so consider this game this is ok. So, here is player 1 starting here let us say he has to uh, two actions L1 R1. Then if he plays R1 then player 2 plays here L2 or R2 and player 1 now has to play again ok. But player 1 does not get to observe what player 2 has played out here. Okay, so, these two nodes here are in the same information set for player 1. The game can end in 4 uh, sorry 5 possible uh, leaf nodes. Let us just name these leaf nodes and let us see what can happen in each case ok. So, let us say let us call this outcome O1, this outcome is O2, O3, O4, O5. I am deliberately not putting numbers here because I do not want you to get distracted by the numbers. So, we have to just think of which outcome is getting realized ok. So, that then we focus on that rather than you know saying how much payoff each player is getting. Yes, it is a multi act game 
layer 1 is acting twice. No, 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 it is not in feedback form. It is a multi act game. It is not in feedback form. Yeah, that is a different, that is what I said last time, right? A, a, a feedback for stage wise feedback form is a very specific form of multi act game. A multi act is in general just not single act. Okay, any other question? Clear? Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean you could, you could, but you could pro pro potentially reduce it to that sort of form, but I mean that is, that is not the question here. I mean it is whether this can be, you could potentially add, add some fictitious action for player, player 2. Uh, in this stage and then make it into feedback okay but anyway that's not our concern here so if there are five possible outcomes okay and let us what we'll do is we'll do uh, we'll we'll allow players to randomize in these two different ways all right and let us see if we can we actually get some kind of parity between the two ways of randomizing okay so first to begin with uh, let us let us look at uh, let us write out the set of pure strategies for player 1. Okay, So, I think I should write something here also for player 1. So, this this is again L1, 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 R1. Okay. Yeah. So, let us write out what are the pure strategies for player 1. For player 1 has two information sets the node that he starts with and the second one is the the this information set and at each information set he has two actions. Okay. So, so he can there are four possible pure strategies therefore, L1 here, L1 here, L1 here, R1 here, R1 here, L1 here and R1 here, R1 here. Okay. So, I will just write these as so pure strategies for player 1, I will just write them in short as L, L1, 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 R1, R1, L1 and R1, R1. Okay. How many pure strategies for player 2? He has just one information set, he has only two pure strategies which is to play L2 or R2. So, what is now a mixed strategy for player 1? A mixed strategy for player 1 is a probability distribution on this set here, on this set, right, which means he is going to play one of these at random, okay. So, mixed set of mixed strategies, so let us call this gamma 1 and let us call this gamma 2. set of mixed strategies what are the set of mixed strategies for player 1 it is he has four pure strategies so you can think of it as uh, a, a let's say y in r4 such that y is greater than or equal to 0 and it's a probability distribution right so, it is a dis probability distribution on this set of pure strategies which has four elements. Clear? So, it is specified by, so th this set is, uh, is um, you, every point in this set is has four coordinates, okay, out of which one is redundant because this uh, one transpose y is equal to one. So, you can say well, this is, you give me, this is specified by three parameters. So, a mixed strategy is specified by three parameters. Okay. Uh, what about the set of behavioral strategies for player 1? So, how do I define the set of behavioral strategies for player 1? So, he, uh, in a behavioral strategy, he has to choose an action at random at each information set. Okay. So, there are how many information sets? Two for player 1. 
So, at this information set he chooses an action at random ok. So, what are so he has to pick a probability distribution on this action set. So, a behavioral strategy will be specified by those by that probability by the probability distributions for each information set right. So, at this information set he chooses an action at random. Similarly, at this info at this sorry at this information set he again chooses an action at random ok. So, a behavioral strategy then would be say he plays L1 with probability alpha and R1 with probability 1 minus alpha at this information set. And at the other information set he plays L1 with probability beta and R1 with probability 1 minus beta. This is a behavioral strategy right. So, every choice of alpha and beta between 0 and 1 will give me a behavioral strategy. Is this clear? So, do I need to say specifically what is the probability of playing this L1 and this R1 here? No, it is the same because he has a, they, they it will they will also be beta and 1 minus beta because at this information set he has to play uh, this as a function of just that information right ok ok. So, so the set of behavioral strategies therefore, is specified by just two parameters alpha comma beta. Now, this is immediately telling you something right. The set of mixed strategies is specified by three parameters right and the set of behavioral strategies is specified by two parameters. So, we cannot really expect any kind of subset type relation like this, that one is a subset of the other or something like that. Because these are these are now objects in two different spaces ok. These are Fundamentally, I mean, there are more free variables in in mixed strategies than there are in uh, in behavioral strategies. So we can't expect a subset type relation, but we can. So therefore, we have to talk of uh, sort of uh, a relation between these that is beyond just inclusion. You know that one is a special case of the other. Because these are this is a uh, this is an R two. These are two. Hmm. It's a distribution, yeah. No, no, no. So the see the it's not a subset. You what what you are saying is that I can try to create a relation between the two. Okay. So that's in fact the point that if you are looking for an inclusion type of thing where one is a special case of the other. Then we have to ask special case un under what notion, right? Special case under what notion, right? Because it is certainly not a subset, right? Then in what sense is this a special case? So, something has to be preserved under both type of strategies for you to get one as a special case of the other, right? So, this basically becomes the ba uh, essential dilemma. You, now, if you think about it, we have logically said that we could allow players to randomize in these two ways which are which seem both re, uh, you know reasonable and it should be allowable that players be allowed to randomize in this way. But one kind of randomization gives a player seems to be somehow not you know the same as the other. So, then we have then we 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 are put we are uh, we get into this position where we now have to choose and this is something which we would not want to do as game theorists that we do not want to tie a player's hands and say that this is what he should do. We should allow strategic freedom to the player. Now, have we do is there something that one one can now still say that these are in some way similar or equivalent or interchangeable or whatever. Right. So, this is essentially the uh, the juncture we reach and now we in, so we have to come up with a way by which we say well, uh, well is, is in what sense are these two strategies you know comparable. Is this clear? So, yeah. Hmm? 
yeah so that's that's that is part of the uh, that's beginning you are now beginning to think in that direction essentially we have to think of okay what we what are we meaning by equivalent right so so then you ask okay well equivalent okay well if it's equivalent from the point of view of payoffs right then we can ask okay well if one framework you can say is well i am asking for equivalence in terms of payoffs which means that the pro which means that the payoff that i get the expected payoff that i get under one i should also be able to get it under the other by a suitable choice it means for all mixed strategies that give me a certain expected payoff can i produce a behavioral strategy that gives me a gives me the same payoff this could be one notion of equivalence because then in that case i don't care about whether i use and as a uh, as a player i don't care and likewise as a as an observer of the game i don't care what the player is doing whether he's randomizing this way or randomizing that way but you can see there is one catch there as well because the payoff the expected payoff depends not just on what this player is doing but also what other players are doing so then we have to define expected in a suit, uh, expected payoff as being the same in a sort in a very strong sense that it means that regardless of what others do this guy should be able to simulate the same same payoff with two different types of randomizations right yeah hmm on joint distribution and marginal distribution on Mm. Mm, roughly yes yeah correct so you are absolutely right essentially these two ways of randomizing they, def they define for you a joint a joint distribution on the probable uh, on the set of nodes of the tree they tell you with what probability if i tell you a a, a a a a mixed strategy or a behavioral strategy for each player okay whatever combination some may play mix some may play behavioral effectively it 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 from there i should be able to compute the probability of the appearance of uh, the probability that the game history passes through each node for every node i should be able to compute such a probability right so you are absolutely right but then now i can compute that but then now for equivalence what should i ask for so what uh, ashwin was saying was that you can ask for something you can we start with the payoff let's just say okay let the pay, let let us just ask that the probability of reaching the leaf nodes is the same right but then we have a joint distribution which tells us the probability of reaching any node not just the leaf node right so then that gives you that that, that then demands us the maybe maybe should we be extending that why leaf node only should we be allowing for all nodes if we allow for all nodes does it become too restrictive etc etc these are all questions involved in 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 trying to come up with the right notion of equivalence right so so the this this question actually was is 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 actually very interesting and it's it turns out it's related finally whether you can uh, whether there is any equivalence between these two has something finally to do with the amount with memory this this issue comes up only in multi act games and as i said the fundamental new feature from in multi act games as opposed to single act games is the issue of memory what does a player know of what he knew earlier okay and whether these two forms of randomization this form of randomization or the other mixed and behavioral whether these two can be interchanged in a in a in an effective in a you know in a in an effective way is eventually decided by what a player can remember okay so the memory has memory has a huge role to play here okay so so what i'll tell you is this notion of uh, equivalent so so the way uh, so it turns out actually that if we restrict ourselves to only leaf nodes right here if we restrict ourselves to only leaf nodes it becomes two it becomes uh, two let's say one is it doesn't become elegant the other is it also leads to a whole bunch of other loopholes which we which we will have to plug later 
okay so there the a much a much better notion of equivalence is is that you ask for equivalent that you can simulate the same distribution for every node in the graph uh, for every node in the tree okay what we'll do is we have now two different ways of randomizing so we'll let sigma i be mixed strategy of player i so this is a probability distribution on uh, so probability distribution on gamma i which is a set of pure strategy and b i is the behavioral strategy is a behavioral strategy so behavioral strategy is a conditional probability distribution now given each information set it produces a probability distribution on the set of actions so it's not it's a, so it is actually a collection of conditional probability distributions okay so this is so the way we write this is that bi of this given an information set eta i is a probability distribution on actions available at at eta i okay and i will put in another notation here mu mu i this will stand for any either of the above so when i write for all mu i for example it would mean that it could be it's essentially all mixed and all behavioral okay that's what it would mean okay now so here's the definition of equivalence mixed strategy sigma i a mixed strategy a mixed strategy sigma i and a behavioral strategy bi are equivalent are said to be equivalent if for every mixed stroke behavioral strategy mu i uh, behavioral strategy mu minus i sorry strategy mu minus i and every vertex x in the game tree we have the following the probability of reaching the vertex under sigma i when player i plays sigma i and others play mu minus i is equal to the probability of reaching that vertex x when player i plays b behavioral strategy bi and others play mu minus i so notice how strong this is but this is how this is what we need otherwise we'll end up having too many loopholes to fill as i said okay so this is strong why is this so we are saying that two notions uh, two types of strategies sigma i is equivalent to bi if for every thing that the others play they could play mixed stroke or they could play behavioral that is and that is encompassed into mu minus i so any mixed or behavioral strategy combination uh, that the others could play called mu minus i and for every vertex in the tree these probabilities are the same okay this so what is this probability this is the probability that you reach vertex x when player i plays sigma i and others have playing mu minus i and this is the probability that of reaching vertex x when player i plays bi and others play mu minus i this is clear so once i specify a profile of 
strategies, combination of mixed behavioral whatever, it, it produces for me a probability distribution on the nodes of the tree. So, these two quantities are well defined. What I am asking for is that regardless of what the others play, I should be able to get the same distribution okay? uh, uh, that I get from sigma i that I should be able to get the same one from b i. Okay? So, these, this means that uh, this makes these two strategies equivalent. Okay, so, the, I, I switch from sigma i to b i, I should, should be able to get, if, I, if the distribution of uh, probability distribution on the nodes remains the same and others and, and it remains the same regardless of what the others play, okay, then uh, regardless of uh, remains, I mean the equality holds regardless of what the others play. Okay. Of course, the distribution will keep changing uh, with the choice of mu minus i, but but uh, but when it changes, it changes to the same uh, e, the 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 one that I get with sigma i is equal to the one that I get with b i. Is this clear? So now, as a result of this, we get the following uh, simple fact that if if sigma i is is equivalent to b i. is if, if the mixed strategy sigma is equivalent to a behavioral strategy b i, then for all mu minus i, the, the payoff that a player or the, the cost that a player ha gets when he plays sigma i and others play mu minus i is equal to the cost that he would get when he plays b i and others play mu minus i is clear. Of course, the value of the cost will be de will depend on what others are playing, but regardless of what others play, I can get the same values by switching from b i to sigma, sigma i to b i. Is this clear? Okay. Right. So, and now this is equivalence between strategies of one player. Uh, if you have this way equivalence between the strategies of all players, Right, then you would have that for this is true for every player. Okay, every player will be able to switch from between behavioral and mixed. 